good morning everyone uh, i hope i am audible to all of you um so i am ab jacob i am director of engineering at sadai and for the q and a session i'll be joined by benjamin thomas who is co-founder and presenter and president sir and um the following will be the format of our discussion um first we'll look at the relevance of bm based application in the autonomous era then we shall discuss the struggles and problems of managing a fleet of vms then we will look at the importance of a platform team and dive deep into the strategies and standards that can be employed to start your autonomous journey now uh, significance of vms in the modern infrastructure now we all know that the vms have been around for a couple of decades though we have um, modern platforms like kubernetes and serverless a significant percentage of cloud usage is still attributed to vms now a lot of companies like um, large enterprises prefer vms because it allows fine grained control vms are helpful in adherence to standards and compliances it provides better security and isolation certain companies which prefer to have a compute on hybrid cloud environment also prefer vms because um it gives them seamless mobility from on prem to cloud and vice versa now when it comes to cost vms are the best bet if your requirements are predictable and you can do app by sizing vms can support heterogeneous workloads the same stateless to stateful web to batch messaging queue to cache web hosting to high performance compute all these use cases can be implemented using vms now if you are to compare modern ias with vms it's like comparing a bentley with land cruiser 70 series like bentley is expensive but someone who can buy a bentley won't put a bumper sticker on top of it similarly while using modern ias um people subconsciously conform to certain set of standards and methodologies that makes their life easy meanwhile a land cruiser is built to, built like a tank and is highly customizable and is a workhorse similarly the versatility versatility of vm is what that makes them a formidable contender even today now having a modern ias might not solve all your problems of with infrastructure so let me quote an example of a white paper published by amazon prime wherein they had an application architected using serverless and step function uh, which was identifying defects in uh, the video that was being streamed now they had reacted this particular application using ec2 and ecs tasks and apparently uh, the quality of the output was equal like the last application at, and it was actually using a fraction of a cost so the vms might sound legacy but as the saying goes an old broom knows the dirty corners best with every boon comes with the bane um having more control in hand means that you need to constantly tune them to get the best outcome for an sari managing a fleet of vms all these tasks that i mentioned in the slide had to be done periodically now this would have been a daunting task in the pre cloud era however vms on cloud have simplified these complexities say for example um, hardened os images are available outright in the marketplace if you want to run remediation you need not write routines or scripts you have cloud apis to do reboot resize and what not there is out of the box availability of matrices and many built in tools to provide insights to help ease the decision making of an asari given the scenario over a period of time it seems that managing vms have become far less complex than the past now in this slide we are going to cover two main aspects uh, we will first look at the importance and role of a platform team in the autonomous journey and also look at the concepts and also try to figure out a concept of man and man team the very definition of man and man teaming is operational deployment of man and unmanned assets in concert towards a shared mission objective it is actually a battlefield terminology wherein the priority is to have minimal number of boots on ground while we use unmanned assets to as a force force multiplier to ensure mission success with highest efficiency with least casualty here the platform team forms a core which enforces a certain set of standards across the fleet 
so that the unmanned assets can actually identify applications, make sense of data, find anomalies, or recommend optimizations in the fleet, and facilitate autonomous actions. Thus, the platform team sets the framework for autonomous system to act upon. Now, as a platform team, you need to first identify the app boundary. A bunch of computes doing the same task and is expected to behave similarly can be termed as an app. And if something goes wrong, a collective action can be taken on all of these instances of the app. Then comes metric standardization. In a heterogeneous fleet, SREs may use Node Exporter for Linux or WM Exporter or Windows Exporter for Windows. Hence, it is important that the matrices are labeled correctly such that the system can precisely identify the matrix of a specific application. The third step is identifying the golden signal. Now, we all know that there is no paucity of telemetry. Finding the right signal to listen to is like finding the needle in a haystack nowadays. The autonomous system should know the latency, error, saturation, and throughput of an application so that this information can fed to algorithms and machine learning systems so that a recommendation can be generated. If the first three steps are done accurately, then the autonomous system can use the information to discover and classify apps based on three criteria. You can use, use, use traffic pattern to identify an application. If not for that, you can look at tagging and then group together your apps. If your instances don't fall in the first two criteria, then they can be termed as orphaned apps. With the discovered apps information, we can identify matrices and use them to run algorithms and find optimization opportunities and remediation. The first five steps are relatively easier. Handling remediation is the last step and the toughest one. Now, if your recommendation system actually throws in a, rec a, recommendation, a remediation action, then it has to go through a sequence of steps so that it could be performed safely on the customer environment. So let's go by one step at a time. If there's an action, we need to ask whether this action can be safely performed on that application without risk. If you have a green signal there, you go to the next one. Is it the right time to apply the action or is there a preferred time to execute this particular action on this application? If we have a go ahead for the first two steps, then you go ahead and perform the action. After performing the action, we need to figure out if the app is healthy. And the last step would be validating the efficacy of your operation. This step is also important because this allows us to close our learning loop and use this information for further actions. Now, in this particular slide, um, I've showcased how Sarai has tried to solve the problems that we have mentioned in the previous slide. Sarai uses cloud APIs or custom APIs to identify and discover the components of your um, infrastructure. And our infer inference engine actually utilizes this information to build a topology. With this topology information, we should be able to deduce the application. With the information of application, our metric exporter takes the data from all the monitoring providers. And with the information of the application and the matrices, Sadai machine learning algorithms can generate remediations and optimization opportunities. These information are given to execution engine, which actually executes the last leg. The last leg is the most important one. The execution engine should be carefully and cohesively integrated to the platform so that it can utilize remediation APIs to perform the actions in the cloud. Now, autonomous actions for availability and optimization in VMs. We can run autonomous remediations based on anomaly detected on latency, error, and custom matrices. And when it comes to performance or cost optimization, we need to look at the provision, the state of provisioning of that particular application. It might be over provisioned or under provisioned. If it is over provisioned, it is a scenario where you can save costs by resizing the application. If it's under provision, we need to look for performance impacts in that application and we have to resize the application to remedy the problems. In certain cases, you can also do selective shutdown based on seasonality of non-usage of 
the Vx. In this particular slide, on the left side, this is a snapshot from Sedai's application. Um, it's VM optimization page, actually. The left side, you can see the op optimization opportunity presented for a specific account. And on the right side, you can see the autonomous execution that Sedai has undertaken for a specific VM-based application. You can see how meticulously Sedai is looking through each and every step and executing it one by one. Now, in certain environments, you can provide autonomous system higher degree of freedom. In those cases where you prefer to have a man in the middle, autonomous systems can hand over the control and decision of execution to an SRE. This aspect of tag teaming to execute autonomous action is what a manned and unmanned, un unmanned teaming is all about. I think I see the first question. Um, it's how do you deal with non-standard setup in virtual machine-based application? So by um, non-standard setup, if you mean multiple applications deployed on one particular VM, then um, it's a complex scenario. We need to identify the application by looking at the ports in which they are actually uh, deployed to and form the discovery based on that. And then derive metrics out of the information that you have taken for the application. But this discovery and getting the information, um, it might not be, um, it, it is relatively easier. But then the tougher part is handling that particular operation. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there was a second step where when, when you, your autonomous system will look for whether it's the right time for running that particular um, operation. In cases where you have same app, multiple applications running the same VM, it would be far more safer for the autonomous system to go through all these steps, wherein um, the second step, which says whether it's the right time to do the operation. So in this complex scenario, it will, it, the system would be probably be responding for, for a scheduled um, operation, which is supposed to happen during a lean time of traffic or during, uh, let's say, a planned downtime. That's it. And yeah, yes, John, I'm not able to hear your questions. I see only the chat. So um, I'm reading on the second question as well. So does should I support VM-based application in all clouds? Yes. Um, we currently support AWS and Azure in uh, for the enterprise customers. Um, VMware and on-prem is supported by custom integrations as of now. And we should be doing our, um, our product rollout for GCP by probably by end of Q4. That's it. 